Alright, so before we get started, fucking flamingos and shit, bitch, roll up in your face. Yeah, take it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I kinda had to. I, I was told I would get kicked in the head if I didn't uh, say flamingos this next episode or next next video I did. So I decided, alright, fine, I don't want to kick in the head. Uh, especially from someone whom, you know, I kinda care about. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. But anyway, this is supposed to be a serious video. Um, sort of. Uh... I'm going to be teaching you how to make a wreath in Photoshop. And then also I'm going to be showing you guys how I made my cover art for YouTube. But anyway, to further pander to Anonymous, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play this. And uh, if you don't like this shit, nor the flamingos, then fuck you. Get, get out of here. I don't want you here anymore. So, so in a nutshell, this is pretty much my own way of making a wreath. There are pretty much, there are probably, excuse me, there are probably more ways of doing this out there, but uh, this is my own personal way, just in case anybody wants to know. And uh, I put in this tutorial as well as making my background because I really wanted to put out this tutorial, but the wreath was essential to the, the background. Also, I wanted to make me making my background because, or make a video about me making ba my background be or my channel art because I wanted to give some incentive as to how I make my own stuff and perhaps give some people some ideas about how they make their stuff. Now, what you're going to see here isn't the final product. Of course, I don't ever have a final product unless it's something that I just dropped. Then, yeah, the, the last product is the final. I encourage you guys not to have a final project almost ever. So, uh, anyways, recording this was a bit of a bitch. It was really difficult for me to actually work with my program here and record at the same time, so things were a bit wonky. But getting onto it, I basically just take a line, I'll warp it out by like a lot to give it that that rounded stem look that kind of cuts the rounding at the bottom and takes another turn. And then I'll take the pen tool and I'll draw out the stem at the very bottom and it took me a bit of time to work on this so I am quite sure that it'll take you some time to get the pen tool to work with you if you're new to it but uh, I'm definitely not new to do using the pen tool being in uh, on YouTube uh, creating my own thumbnails my own channel art and uh, even some others I w I've worked on uh, graphics for other people as well so it's it's it's, uh, it's something I'm not unfamiliar with and then so here I start working on the leaf uh, it starts off as just a line I'll take it and I'll warp it to a point and then I'll sh sort of shape it I'll bring the two points together on a line I usually use um I don't know what they're called but they're those little blue lines you can see there I, you just drag from the left all the way to where you want it. I'll put it in the center. And then I'll put the two points of, of the warp on on that line to pretty much... What is it called? <laughs> what am I trying to say here? I'll, I'll make it to where I um, uh, point the leaf. Or point the, the line. Bring the line to a point. That's what it is. And then I'll just warp it out. And it, it does take some fiddling around with. And uh, trying to get it to your liking is a bit tough. Especially because when you do warp, it um, it stretches out the image. It makes it thicker or thinner than it's supposed to be, or, or originally was. So it, it'll take a lot of fiddling. But don't worry about too much how it looks, because you're only going to see one side on the outline, basically. The rest of it's going to be filled in. Um, you could take some other tools and kind of fix it up if you like like I did with the uh, the skew tool just then and then you can go ahead and start on the second line I tried to use the pen tool here but well, let me tell you the, the pen tool really does not like to work with you on some things and it, it's also narrow and and in, in the way it works so I would recommend using the uh, the line and warp tools again for the second side of the leaf um, just in case you want it to look, you know, pretty much rounded instead of more squared off in some areas. I just round out the other side and make it look like a leaf. And once again, the warp tool is a bit of a punk to work with. A bit difficult. It'll, it'll trouble you because in some areas it'll, it'll come to a point and drop. So, 
that's one thing that'll make your job tougher, but working with the lines that the warp t tool gives you, yeah, excuse me, um, I'm sure you could get it done. It's not that hard. Uh, but if you if you're new to this, I would recommend playing around with the warp tool a little bit with the lines and don't give up. Don't give up. Okay, man. It's it's really simple once you get into it. And uh, really try hard to get it done if you want to make a leaf. And remember, the one side is all that's going to be shown. Uh, in the end, you'll do be doing a lot more warping, um, like I am here. And I'll just warp it to that other side. You don't want to make it perfect at first. Um, and you don't even want to make it perfect at last. <laughs> Perfection kind of screws things up, especially because there's no real way to be perfect. So it'll it'll screw you up in the sense that... You're not gonna get it perfect, buddy. Okay, you just you're just not. So just don't try. Even I can't get it perfect, and I'm. I mean, that's not a whole lot to say because I'm not that. I'm <laughs> not not much of a Photoshopper. Um, and then with this, of course, I'm using the fill tool. I suppose. Um, the the bucket tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the leaf. And uh, that'll give me pretty much everything I need. So here's the leaf. It's pretty much done. Just got to do a little bit more warping to it now. And uh, th I'll get it to my desired shape. And then the, the leaf will be done and we'll move on to the veins of the leaf. So here we go with the stem or uh, the veins excuse me I bring the two points in once again onto a guideline then bring the two dots down uh, to the respective corners either left or right and then I basically I just warp it up I make it kind of the shape of the front side of the leaf or the first line I did uh, in, in, in your uh, in your perspective it'd be the right side uh, and I, I just warp it. I make it uh, how I like it. Bring it, you know, bring the point over, and then I start with the pen tool, working on the the rest of the veins. Um, lines are my biggest asset, but the pen tool makes for some really clean, smooth, wave wavy lines that I like. Uh, and it's really quick to work with. It's not like the lines and the the warp tool again. It doesn't take like a whole lot of work. It's just sim something simple you could do really quick. And when working with the pen tool, uh, you could click and hold and you'll be able to use that point um, uh, to kind of bend what's gonna ha what, what happens behind it. But it'll also bend the rest of the line uh, beyond it. Uh, so what you wanna do is after you set a warp, uh, what I call a warpy line or a warpy yeah, a warpy pen sh uh, path. You'll want to uh, put another point afterward. So here we go. Of course, working with this thing uh, is a bit of a bit of a pain. You know, just like the rest of the leaf. Uh, I just go ahead and flip it, uh, and then I'm going to warp it afterwards to make it, you know, kind of fit inside. And as you can see, you know, it is a bit too large on some areas. I'm not gonna fix the leaf because I like the way it looks. But I'm, I'm going to take the veins, I'm going to warp them out, and of course, when you warp, it does just that. It warps to the image, and that's not something you always want, so try to keep it to a minimum if you can. Of course, I had to do some areas where it was really, where the warp really pronounced and uh, made a big difference. Um, but of course, when, when getting into it, you're going to want to warp. Uh, your your lines definitely because that's what you're trying to do you're trying to make a, a, a wavy feel um, so here we come to the end of the stem and of course I do warp the leaf at last but uh, I decided to anyway so once you have your vein layer pretty much done you're gonna set it over your leaf and then you're going to hit control and mouse click the layer's thumbnail. Uh, and then once you do that, you're going to rasterize, if you have not already done so, your leaf layer. 
and then cut by pressing delete or control X however you prefer to do it I personally prefer delete because it just gets rid of it don't have anything on my clipboard and then very important uh, thing to do afterwards is you want to convert your leaf layer to a smart object uh, if you do not do so your picture will look really pixely and it'll try to keep an aspect ratio basically um, if you do the uh, if you do convert to a smart object though it won't it'll like keep it'll pretty much keep everything it has as best as it can and it'll it always keeps it looking clean so do not forget to do that all right, so now we're back to the fun part. This is the actual making of the wreath. As you saw earlier, I brought up another wreath stem that I made. And basically, I just take and copy uh, the, the leaf over and over again. Of course, it's going to give it that same monotonous look. But, you know, I don't, I don't think it's very necessary to work for hours on, um, like, each leaf. Although, it would be nice to, but you're pretty much going to get the same thing anyway. And this is a wreath. You don't want to really. You don't. You don't really want to make it look all that different because you do want to keep some of the same aspects. You've seen a wreath before. They kind of have all the same leaves. They all go for the same details. But to add a little bit of difference to each one, I do warp each and every leaf. I make it look a bit different each time. Um, so that adds a little bit extra spunk I suppose and I just basically build it up I I shrink each leaf every time I'll make one uh, as you go up I'll shrink it each leaf every time uh, just to make it you know a little bit more aesthetic uh, a little bit more pleasing to the eye and to make it more dynamic it makes it look uh, brings perspective to the uh, the whole picture which is kind of what you want um, and that's kind of how a uh, I, I don't want to say how a wreath grows because I don't think they grow. That's pretty much how leaves uh, grow. Um, and once you get here, you kind of want to refrain from actually. Um, you want to refrain from messing with your wreath anymore. Uh, the leaves are fine to mess with, but the wreath, do not worry about it. I just go ahead and cut out those two leaves just to bring it in closer. And uh, I'll I'll you know rotate them like that just to make them a bit a bit more uh, upward facing. Now you can, once you get to this point you can do pretty much whatever you want with your wreath. Um, you could make it however you want. You can make it more obtuse, more acute. Uh, however you want to do it. I prefer the more obtuse looking feature in this one. Uh, but here's our wreath complete. And um, it looks pretty good. I like the way it looks. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you were just here for the wreath, uh, sayonara. I'll catch you later. But that is the wreath tutorial. If you enjoyed, please do like, rate, and subscribe. If you want to stay for the rest, please do. Uh, the rest of this is going to feature a theme. Uh, it looks a lot like this. Uh, this is the Flesh God Apocalypse album King, which has a very Romanian feel to it. It has uh, lots of those bright golds and those deep rich reds in it and um, it also has the earth earth like tones and such like that so from here I'm going to create my uh, or I'm gonna shape or position my wreath however I like I do it at a 45 degree angle I, I finally decided to at the end and then I'll write my name um, with the Radley Gratis uh, font which is what I prefer. Uh, and then here I'll take my name and I'll alter it a little bit more, uh, cr making the U a lot larger than the other letters significantly. And then I throw a line underneath it just to add a little bit more like presentability or present pr presentation to it and uh, alter that up a little bit. And then I take the text tool and highlight the entire name and then I don't know what the value is called, but I, it basically spaces out the letters even further. And then the line sp basically just clips to the um, the letters itself. So you'll be able to like resize the line to however long you want it to be. Uh, and it'll fit perfectly underneath your name. Photoshop will automatically do that for you. 
And so here I have a, a cloth that I brought in from another project that I used. And this is a stock image, probably the only one I'll ever use. And I have it sized to where I like. Um, and it, it looks really nice. Uh, unfortunately, I can't make cloth in Photoshop just yet, so I had to use a stock image. Now, it kind of drapes over the... Uh, what's it called? It kind of drapes over the, the name a little bit, but I fixed that in the final... The, the most recent product I have on my channel and uh, I basically just colored over with a bit deeper red that I want uh, to make it more lush and more vibrant and then I, I changed the blend mode uh, I believe the one I use is uh, vivid light or linear light one of those two those two are the ones that are decent for this uh, this isn't base this isn't much of a tutorial for how to make my low my uh, my channel art but Hey, if you want to use that, go ahead. You'll know what it does. And so here I go. I bring in um, some colors from my other project, and I start to use them just to keep it, you know, similar uh, in in, res in respect to each other. I want to keep it as close as possible, and that's something that you have to do when when you're recoloring stuff. You'll want to use the same colors over and over again if you're if you're making a collection of items. Uh, like I am, how they're so similarly uh, put together, and uh, I'll even uh, edit it later to because I do change it here a little bit. Uh, I due to the size of uh, the name compared to the logo that I have on the other uh, on the other project I have going on there that you see, I have to change it up a little bit, make it make it smaller so that way it's not like in your face and it takes over the entire logo. Uh, rather, the divots, the, the, the chiseling, and the bevel is sized to that uh, proportion. So I bring it over and uh, I do the bevel to all three objects, the wreath, the name, and the line. Alright, and that's the end of it. I know, well, I didn't get to the background. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but the rest of the video just kind of drops off after me making the background for a little bit, so I will show you a little bit of me making the background, but not a whole lot, because, uh, I mean, there's no real point. I get to a, a certain point, but it's literally me just brushing. I use the brush tool, I put in the colors that I want, which are a very earth tone type of color. And uh, I just blotch it up. I put them in random spaces. I, I kind of make it look like a, 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 a USA military camo of some sort. And then I use uh, th three to four different um, smart filters that y you will want to use if you're trying to recreate my background. Um, and, and then some filters. Uh, I use sprayed strokes. Uh, I'll use crosshatch in some areas as well just to create that uh that feel of like more scratches come in and, and that's what i go for is a very scratchy effect and then i'll use splatter as well they're all under brush strokes and that's what i was looking for i mean heck it's almost as if somebody painted the rocks um which i guess is where uh most people get that saying from um I mean, I'm talking about in the real world here. Uh, in my photo, yes, it does look like somebody painted the rocks, but I mean, in, in real life, that's kind of how rock looks too. Although this is more cross-hatchy. Uh, and then go ahead and use the blur filter. I use blur, blur more, and Gaussian blur, but you can use whichever ones you want. And uh, just keep on mixing those together and keep on blurring it and sharpening it and just spraying strokes down and copying layers and overlaying the layers and then merging the layers together uh, f rotating them and everything every every sort of thing like that you can you can do all that uh, and that's what I did is I just kept doing that until I found the background that I wanted and uh, that's the background you saw with the wreath which I'm showing you here again because I love love the effect I did with it uh, in, in, in Premiere Pro the effect I did with the background dropping, oh my god, it looks so good, I like it, I love it, I want some more of it. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, if you made it this far, you guys are fucking troopers, I appreciate that so much. Um, there's, this was a, a very long video, this was longer than I had anticipated and longer than I wanted to do. Um, all the credits are here, 
um, everything you saw in this video uh, or heard uh, that's all presented in the credits here I want to thank um, celebrity short video for the heathens instrumental uh, flesh god apocalypse for their logo and theme I'm sorry I kind of just appropriated your theme I want to thank the Romans for appropriating their culture <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm not going to go that far. Um, and I want to thank all of you for allowing me to do this. It's been fun, um, and uh, I, I like doing these kinds of things. Uh, wallpapers will be out for this theme of my logo and everything like that. I've already gotten backgrounds out for the last theme, uh, or wallpapers and stuff like that. Uh, I'll get those out for iOS, Android, and even your desktop. So if you guys want that, be sure to keep an eye out and uh, keep an eye out for the next video. I'll catch you guys then. Deuces.